ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिमीरांद से ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील ईना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतमनोभीष्ट स्थापित ईन भूतले स्वयं रूपकदाह्यम ददाति स्वदाक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुत पदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परीजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्णकुण सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तु ते तप्तकांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वाचाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातरिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधरा श्रीवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ओबेसेंसेस और ग्लोरी टू प्रभुपाद थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू योर वंडरफुल प्रोग्राम सो एनीवन हैज एनी क्वेश्चंस और एनी थैंक यू स्टार्ट विद हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धनवट प्रणाम जय शिला प्रभुपाद हरे कृष्ण यस प्रभु जी आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली देयर इज अ वन गाय इन इंडिया ही वाज आस्किंग मी दैट यू हैव टेक इनिशिएशन फ्रॉम शिला प्रभुपाद सो नाउ हु इज हु इज गाइडिंग यू So I tell him that you know I'm taking uh, knowledge from uh, uh, Chila Prabhupad books. No, no, no. He said that from day to day life. I say I have my six guru, Sundar Gopal Prabhu. So is this a correct? I have say him or what? What you are suggest me, Prabhu? Can you please give me on brief answer? Yeah, because you have got any doubts, you are asking me, correct? Yes, Prabhu. So I'm your six guru like that. You can say. Hmm? Sure, sure. Hmm. Shiksha Guru means one who brings you, who also helps you, no, to understand Prabhupada, correct? Yes. There's no difference between the Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru. Mm-hmm. That's in the CC, you know. Uh huh. spoken by krishna das kaviraj Thank so if there is uh, no difference then uh, but but you know you have connected to the prabhupad right prabhu hmm yeah. you also connected to prabhupad mhm is it not mhm hmm See here. Yes, Prabhu Ji. One should know the instructing spiritual master to be the personality of Krishna. Lord Krishna manifests Himself as the Super Soul and as the greatest devotee of the Lord. 
purport. <clears throat> Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami states that the instructing spiritual master is the bona fide representative of Sri Krishna. As Sri Krishna himself teaches us as the instructing spiritual master from within and without. From within, he teaches as a Paramatma, our constant companion, and from without, he teaches from the Bhagavad Gita as the instructing spiritual master. There are two kinds of instructing spiritual master. One instruct uh, one is the liberated person fully absorbed in meditation in devotional service, and the other is who is he who invokes the disciple's spiritual consciousness by means of relevant instructions. Thus, the instructions in the science of devotion are differentiated in terms of the objective and subjective ways of understanding. The acharyas, in the true sense of the term, who is authorized to deliver Krishna, enriches the disciple with full spiritual knowledge and thus awakens him to the activities of devotional service. When by learning from the self-realized spiritual master, one actually engages himself himself in the service of in the service of Lord Vishnu, functional devotional service begins. The procedure of this devotional service are known as Abhideha or actions are one is duty bound to perform. Our only shelter is the Supreme Lord and one who teaches how to approach Krishna is the functioning form of the personality of Godhead. There is no difference between the shelter giving Supreme Lord and the initiating and instructing spiritual masters. If one foolishly discriminates between them, he commits an offense in the discharge of devotional service. Sila Sanatan Goswami is the idol spiritual master. For he delivers one the shelter of the lotus feet of Madana Mahana. Even through one may be unable to travel on the field of Vrindavana due to forgetfulness of his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he can get an adequate opportunity to stay in Vrindavana. And derive all spiritual benefits. And uh, and uh, derive all spiritual benefits by the mercy of spiritual master by teaching Arjuna. <laughs> by the Arjuna, the Bhagavad Gita, he is the original perceptor for he gives us instructions and opportunity to serve him. The initiating spiritual master is personal manifestation of Sri La Madan Mahana Vigraha, whereas the instructing spiritual master is personal representative of Srila Govindeva Vigraha. Both of these deities are worshipped at Vrindavana. Srila Gopinatha is the ultimate attraction in spiritual realization. Okay, yes. Prabhuji, so here, here one question also arises here that mm. you know we don't have to discriminate between Siksa Guru and Diksa Guru. Mm. So if someone asks us what you, who is your Guru Maharaj, we can say your name, Sudha Gopal Prabhu. Why not? I'm not the initiate, I'm not the Diksha Guru. Diksha okay. Guru is Prabhupada. I okay. am the Shiksha. You can say I'm the Shiksha. You could have okay. one Diksha Guru, but you must you can have many Shiksha Gurus, you know. Yes. You understand? So the point here that is made is that there's no difference between the shiksha and diksha, you know? Mm -hmm. You follow? That's what so, Krishna Das Kaviraj is explaining. So so first is siksha and then diksha, right Prabhu? Yeah. Okay, okay I got shiksha, it. Uh, without shiksha, how you get to diksha? Mm -hmm. So the Diksha and Siksha Guru sometimes is the same person, mm -hmm. sometimes is different. Prabhupada said that he is the Diksha Guru and we all are the Shiksha Gurus, no? Yes. <clears throat> Correct? Yes, Prabhupada. So one can have one Diksha Guru, but you can have... So here is making the point. 
one can have one diksha guru and you can have many diksha i mean many one diksha guru and many diksha guru no yes many shiksha gurus right bro many shiksha gurus correct mm -hmm. shiksha is say the devotee must a devotee must only one initiated spiritual master because in the scriptures acceptance of more than one is always forbidden there is no limit however to the number of instructing spiritual master one may accept generally a spiritual master who constantly instruct a disciple in spiritual science become his initiated spiritual master later on oh so i got it so prabhu ji now now the question is here again that this uh, one only diksha guru so this guru has who has given the diksha the mm. they are they are not diksha guru or they are what they are because prabhupad says they are finished they are immediately finished they are no, they are useless in their lecture so one time if we take initiation from the that diksha guru and then we left him and we again take diksha from prabhupad what is that actually i'm i'm just confusing here depend on the person just like bhakti vinod taku he never took initiation again from jagannath das baba ji oh and there are people who take reinitiation because they feel they are not connected that's their choice mm. oh no but if if they if they understood like suppose you know in our eyes came a lot of devotees also uh, testimonials the videos that you know i i got proper now so i i take reinitiation or just only that initiation is sufficient what are you saying prabhu on that the moment you have initiation correctly to prabhu then there is no more initiation no oh okay okay i got it like now you got initiated you are connected to prabhupad mm -hmm. so you taking shiksha guidance mm. yes yes everybody must have some shiksha guidance unless you are i mean even you are advanced also still you have to take association no yes prabhu ji hmm? so prabhu if one has got initiated from the so called gurus and then mm. realizes that that is not the right way mm. uh, do they get again initiated uh, using the ritvik uh, system to prabhupad if they want if they accepted that this initiation is a ritvik initiation and prabhupad is a guru they can also go on like that now what the previous initiation was through the so called guru right that is not as a ritvik at all no doubt but actually technically speaking it is it is only ritvik on the you know they cannot give any other kind of initiation uh, so you mean to say they are doing ritvik initiation but only showing to the people saying that uh, they are the so you reject that and you just carry on accepting prabhu part and move on no but if you think that this is not proper in your heart you feel you want to get properly connected then that's another choice of yours mm. understand yes prabhu ah uh, so prabhu ji there is no question of reinitiation that is a strictly here written one initiating spiritual master correct <laughs> this people he said if you are not connected properly he says in another verse uh, i think it is here the one can be reinitiated if they are not connected by proper vaishnav guru no i think it is here thing it is yeah thank can you read anyone one who is yes 
one who is initiated into a mantra by a non vaishnava must go to hell therefore he should again be initiated properly according to the prescribed methods by a vaishnava guru it is the duty of the bona fide spiritual master to examine carefully the qualification of the disciple and the disciple should similarly approach a bona fide spiritual master otherwise the foolish disciple and the dis indiscriminate guru may both be punished by the laws of nature one should not artificially try to assimilate all of the apparently conflict branches of Vedic knowledge. Vedaischa sarvair aham eva vedyaha Bhagavad Gita 15.15 Conditioned souls have various conflicting natures which are engaged by apparently conflicting Vedic injunctions called pravritti and nivritti marga. But the easiest part is simply to learn the process of regularly worshipping Ad Advaya Jnana Lord Vishnu. All the demigods mentioned in the Vedas are paraphernalia for the service of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Whatever exists in the visible material world is also meant to be engaged in the Lord's service, otherwise it has no value. If one artificially renounces material things useful in the service of the Lord, uh, yeah made useful in the service of the lord supreme lord he loses his spiritual qualification of seeing everything as meant for krishna's pleasure and will be forced to think of material objects as meant for his own sense enjoyment in other words material things should be accepted or rejected according to the pleasure of the supreme lord otherwise one will fall down from the standard of pure devotional service as stated in this verse, Labdhvanugraha Acharyat, such discrimination can be learned when one receives the mercy of a bona fide spiritual master who reveals to the sincere disciple the practical application of Vedic knowledge. So the point is here, you know, that you should try. If you are not initiated in a mantra by a non Vaishnav, then you must go to hell. Hmm? So reinitiation is here. Not that you don't can because they are useless, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, Prabhuji. <coughs> so if you got initiated by them, then they are, then I don't know. Yes, Prabhuji. I got it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So any other point on this? Hmm? Uh, Prabhu, I have a question. If someone offends a Vaishnava, uh, hmm. I heard that like some people saying that uh, if somebody offending a Vaishnava, they might get sick or they might face with some accident or so. Is it true, Prabhu? Yeah, Vaishnava Parad, you get the re reaction no? mostly immediately. Mm -hmm. Just like the case of Amoga, he offended the Lord and immediately he got, what is that, cholera. Huh? Mm -hmm. mm. So, what's his name? Uh, one Brahmin, he offended uh, Haridas Thakur and he, get he got leprosy and his nose was going to fall down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. So like that, if you offend the body, then the reaction is immediate. But that doesn't mean that you should not offend the body and you offend others. But offense is offense, no? Mm. So for we are warned not to commit this kind of offenses, you know. Mm. It's dangerous for our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. hmm? mm -hmm. Super. Spiritually speaking, if you offend, then uh, the reaction is very bad, no? Mm -hmm. True. It's like uh, pulling the devotional creeper, you know? Mm -hmm. Mad elephant offense, no? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, true. Why we have to be very cautious. That's why better to become humble, no? Mm -hmm. But but to call a, a 
uh, what? A thief, a thief. Ah, uh, there's no offense, no? Mm-hmm. Someone is not a thief and you call him a thief, then, then you get the problem, no? Mm-hmm. But if someone is a thief and you say he's a thief, then there's no offense to that. Yes? Yes, true. So we should be careful when we deal with others. Mm -hmm. We should be very conscious about this fact, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, true. This is why I have never progressed in my life because I am always offensive. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All that is uh, hindrance to spiritual life, you know. So there's a verse here about how how you get what you get when you become offensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you can see here, I think I showed this many times. Huh? Uh -huh. Sarvamam Bhattacharya was he was offensive, this Amoga Lila, no? Mm So you can read. You can uh -huh. others. Let others also to read. Give them a chance. Yeah, Nikhilesh Prabhu, can you read? Uh, sure, Mataji. Uh, the Hari Bhakta, um, the Hari Bhakti Vilasa, uh, ten point three one zero twelve cites the following quotation from the Skanda Purana. Concerning the blaspheming of a Vaishnava. Yohi Bhagavatam lo, okay, in, 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 a in a conversation between Markandeya and Bhagiratha, it is said, My dear king, one who derides an exalted devotee loses the results of his pious activities his opulence, his reputation, and his sons. Vaishnavas are all great souls. Whoever blasphemes them falls down to the hell known as Maharaurava, accompanied by his forefathers. Whoever kills or blasphemes a Vaishnava and whoever is envious of a Vaishnava or angry with him, or whoever does not offer him obeisances or feel joy upon seeing him certainly falls into a hellish condition. Also, the Hari, Hari Bhakti Vilasa gives the following quotation. Uh, in a conversation between Prahlad Maharaja and Bali Maharaja, it is said, those sinful people who blaspheme Vaishnavas, who are all great souls, are subjected to very uh, severely to the punishment offered by Yamaraja. In the Vedic literature, we find the following statements concerning the blasphemies of Lord Vishnu and his devotees. Those who criticize Lord Vishnu and his devotees lose all the benefits accrued in a hundred pious births. Such persons rot in the Kumbhipaka hell and are bitten by worms as long as the sun and moon exist. One should therefore not even see the face of persons who blaspheme Lord Vishnu and his devotees. Never try to associate with such persons. 
if one does not immediately leave upon hearing the lord or lord devotee blaspheme he falls down from devotional service similarly lord shiva's wife sati states in shrimad bhagavatam if one hears an irresponsible person blaspheme the master and controller of the religion he should block his ears and go away if unable to punish him but if one is able to kill then one should by force cut out the blasphemer's tongue and kill the offender and after that he should give up his own life so this is about all about blasphemy huh? yes Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. yes, these are all the things that we should be careful not to do, no? But, uh, uh, Prabhu, uh, like people are uh, right now, they go against, like, uh, whenever they see Krishna movement or anything, uh, they're kind of uh, going away and they say something, right, Prabhu, like uh, on social media. So, mm. how to deal with it? Because, uh, you know, people keep posting and say, someone is saying this about uh, the movement and other things. Hmm. So what to do if you are the person they are blaspheming, then you should be like this. These people who blaspheme Prabhu, they, they don't understand this concept or they feel that they are blaspheming a non-devotee as per them. The person has got, they think that the person they are blaspheming, I mean, even if a person is an ordinary Vaishnava also, we should be very careful, no? Uh, true, that is what was my feeling too. Is it not big or small? Vaishnava is Vaishnava, no? Yes? Hmm. So yes. we should be very careful not to commit that kind of offense. Especially one who is a preacher, number one offense in chanting the holy name, no? Mm -hmm. Blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives propagating the holy names of the Lord, then you cannot chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, so Prabhu. if a person is, you know, simply blaspheming, something wrong with the person's character, no? Mm. Correct? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, so if a person who is very advanced, then he should act like this, no? Okay. When a person realizes you, he no longer cares about his good and bad fortune arising from past bias and sinful acts. Since it is you alone who control this good and bad fortune, such a realized devotee also disregards what ordinary living beings say about him. Every day he fills his, his ears with your glories, which are recited in each age by the unbroken succession of Manu's descendants. And thus you become his ultimate salvation. So this is how a devotee reacts, you know. But someone who is uh, offending another devotee, then, then we should, uh, you know, you know, we should be careful to, just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no? You understand? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to kill Jaga and Mada, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, if you are Chatriya quality, you cut off his tongue and kill yourself. But if you are Brahmin, you should just block your ears and go away. If you cannot punish the person or you cannot argue. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You understand? I think that is there in this verse.
शिशुपाल है ना शिशुपाल आई स्पीकिंग ऑल कैन ऑफ थिंग्स यू नो सेवेंटी सो वेन यू आर स्पीकिंग टेन सेवेंटी Uh, but I think there's another verse. I'll find that one. No. Mm-hmm. But then here also. So if a person enter an assembly, if he knows the participants they are committing acts of impropriety. and if we having entered such assembly he fails to speak the truth or speak falsely or pleads ignorance he will certainly incur sin so he cannot participate in where some blasphemy is going on no mm-hmm. yes yes so we should be careful you know we You cannot just simply like now I join ISKCON and oh, I join any society that is not in line with what Prabhupada is speaking. Then I am implicated, no? Mm. Yes. Yes, Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhupada. Ten seventy four forty. Yeah. Okay. Here you can see another verse. Yeah, this is the verse. Anyone who fails to immediately leave the place where he hears criticism of the Supreme Lord or his faithful devotee will certainly fall down, bereft of his pious credit. So we have to know how to deal, you know. Firstly, we should not do, and if someone is doing, we should try to, you know, if he's speaking bad about a devotee, just like recently, I think you must have watched Nimai Prabhu. He made a video, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you watched that video? Yes, Prabhu. The others? No, Prabhu, I didn't watch it. Yeah, I recommend you to watch that video. so he was uh, very upset in speaking you know against the blasphemer so that's how one should uh, react you know if you know a vaishnava has been offended then you we should speak up correct uh, yes sir if you don't speak up then you also implicated no Yes, Prabhupada yes. said in the letter, if your guru is being blasphemed, mm-hmm. uh, you cannot just speak, stay quiet. You must attack the person. You know, that's the proper service to the spiritual master. Okay. Yes. Mm. Yes, Prabhupada. Correct. Correct. I have uh, many people uh, speaking bad about me. Not so many, actually, uh, three people. One Russian named Igor, and one German named Dananja, and one lady here, Chinese Sita, you know, and another guy called Bima in Malacca, Malaysia. So they all are up uh, against me. In fact, this Bima guy he was paying somebody money in Bandavan Baba to chant mantra to help me kill, you know. Krishna. So you know, 
pass, you will carry on things like this. Definitely, it's not good for you spiritually. Mm -hmm. Day by day, you'll be bereft. Just like uh, Chapal Gopal, no? Mm -hmm. He offended Srivas Thakur. Mm -hmm. hmm? So he got leprosy and he was sitting by the Ganga. Hmm? And also Ambarish Maharaj, he got blasphemed by this uh, uh, Durvasha Muni. Yes? Yes. Please. So they're all examples, you know. The only way is explained by the Lord himself. If someone does something like this, then the only route is to go and ask for forgiveness if you got some intelligence. Hmm? Hmm. If you think that you, you are, you know, doing the right thing and carrying on doing it, then spiritually, just like uh, two examples, you know, one is that Saubari Muni who was meditating under the water and he saw some fishes, you know. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then he fell down, correct? Yes, true. Yes? Yes. You can see, immediately go, the Lord explain. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Padhyavali Mataji, can you read? Hare Krishna. The, the lesson to be derived from the narration concerning Maharaja, Amrisha and Durvasa Muni is that all the demigods, including Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, are under the control of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, when a Vaishnava is offended, the offender is punished by Vishnu, the Supreme Lord. No one can protect such a person, even Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva. Mm. Yes. yes. So we have to know how to deal. Hmm? When we are attacked, we don't care. But when a body is attacked, then we should try, you know, mm -hmm. to definitely speak up and to punish the offender. Yes. Yes. So, Hare Krishna, uh, I mm. have one question here. Mm. So, uh, like here, it is written that therefore, when a Vaishnava is offended, the offender is punished by Vishnu, the Supreme Lord. So, uh, here also, like that, Vaish if Vaishnava is offender, it is, he is punished by Vishnu or the Supreme Lord. And even like uh, a few days back, we were reading Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, chap uh, Canto 1, uh, Chapter 18, and Text 48. And uh, there it was also uh, a full explanation that how a devotee should be. He should not be envious. And if someone is uh, someone is enemy, enemy of him, he should not, like, he should not... Uh, and do because he is not he he is not enemy at all to anyone. So uh, which until now which I understood that like if like if a devotee is there, uh, if anyone is enemy enemy of devotee, but he is not enemy to anyone. And here also from this line also that, that Lord Lord Vishnu will uh, punish that. Of offender so how we will take it like because so many things are going around so many uh, like as you are telling that there are so many people who are animically commenting bad things so how to react like they will get punished himself by lord and how a devotee should react so my question I will read our our we should try to as now you know we read no uh, spoken by uh, Sati, you know, when Lord Shiva was blessing, you should either block your ears and go away, 
or you are able to punish him, you should try to pull out his tongue and cut his tongue and then kill yourself. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. So, in which angle you are, you have to act accordingly. Hmm? But definitely, you should not participate in that blasphemy by hearing and keeping quiet. Hmm? Yes, that's right. If you can, nowadays, if you can also write a command and say, yes, this guy is a rascal, that's good, no? Or you block him. You understand? Don't let the person again send blasphemous material to you. Yes, that's right. Correct. And you also can rebut if you can rebut. So that's why we are making these videos now. I think uh, Gorangi is trying to do showing all the other side of a person. Yes? Yes, yes. Do you like reading that realization, my realization? Yes, yes, yes Prabhupada. Hmm? So writing all positive things will counter all this negative thing, no? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. So we recommend every one of you to speak your realization. Yes? Yes, yes Prabhu. Mm. So that way you also countering all these crazy arguments, no? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, Prabhu. So in the line of gurus, in the parampara, he doesn't find the name of Arjuna. There are different branches, you know. Arjuna is one branch. Not necessary to list out everyone, correct? Hmm? Uh, yes, Prabhu. So Arjuna's line is not listed, but does not mean that Arjuna line is Mm -hmm. or oh, our line because Arjuna name is not there, is not bona fide. Anyone who repeats that message that originally spoken, some way he heard, like now Arjuna, he, he Krishna spoke to Arjuna, but while Arjuna is speaking, he speaks to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, he said that Vyasa also heard, no? Yes, sir. You read Bhagavad Gita? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, there it was, yes. Ah, so this conversation was spoken by to Sanjaya, correct? Yes, that is correct. And Sanjaya's guru, who is Sanjaya's guru? Vyasadeva. Mm. So it is says that Vyasadeva and all have heard also. So in our parampara, Vyasadeva is there, is it not? Ah, uh, yes, Prabhu. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah. So that means the line is continuing through Vyasadev? Uh, yes, Prabhu. But uh, is Arjuna's line different? Like, uh, in, in, it's not in uh, this path, right, Prabhu? I never read anywhere that Arjuna preached this message to somebody else. Did you read Arjuna? Uh, gets no, some no, I didn't. I didn't. But so that was broken at Arjuna itself? That I don't know, you know. The main thing that Vyasadev heard, so the okay. message is there, how it can be broken, unless the message is lost. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. Huh? You follow? Uh, yes, yes, got it, Prabhu. Mm. Yes. Correct? Yes, uh, yeah, I understood it, Prabhu. Thank you. Mm. Mm. So therefore, we should try to understand that the message is important, not the person, no? Okay. You follow? Uh, yes, Prabhupada. Just like now Prabhupada is not physically here, does it mean it's all broken? No, it is not. Because mm. uh, it's still going on. Yeah. Similarly, same way, correct? As long as the message is intact, then it is okay. <laughs> Either it's coming from Arjuna or it's coming from Vyasadev, but the message is coming, no? Yes, yes, it is coming. Mm, so that is important. Okay, Hello. got it. Mm. 
now they all conclude that you need a living guru but that philosophy is not uh, valid guru is eternal as prabhupada said <laughs> why is guru is eternal because the message is eternal god is eternal correct mm. correct correct yeah. and, and and the lord knows how to keep this message going yes 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 i think prabhupada mentions in lot of purports in bhagavad gita that arjuna's purpose of asking all these questions is to revive the knowledge which was lost yes krishna used arjuna krishna was used by the lord as a instrument no yes prabhu yes prabhu mm. but not just only the lord and arjuna so many others also heard correct 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 yes yeah. oh. so the message is coming down right oh. when the message is not coming down like when kali yuga goes after 10000 years then everything will be lost okay so you please come back after 10000 years maybe you can start to revive the link <laughs> oh. so better to get out yes right? yes mm. better to get out yes mm so you're fortunate you got the link correct correct yes that is correct mm. but if you don't repeat or you don't follow then the link is broken correct so therefore we should be very careful to repeat what we hear from the guru okay not to change mm. and not to yes. you don't repeat and if you change then the message is lost instead of saying krishna is the guru mm-hmm. you say no you know if you if you say krishna is god then if you say no no krishna is not the only god there are many other gods then you change it correct do you understand yes yes got it from mm-hmm. so we should be very careful you know yeah sure sure prabhu got it prabhu i had one more question in the chat what happens to all the material universes during the night of brahma will there be no life on the planets including no trees also yes so all everything up to the mar loka janar loka and tapal loka are devastated yes so, so what are they prabhu sorry this the water from the garbhodaka ocean will uh-huh. rise up and destroy the lower middle planetary system only okay. the higher planetary system from jana loka mar loka and tapa loka are not devastated when brahma goes to sleep oh, okay got it but what happens to yamadharma rajyo agra like they may go to the higher planet okay but devastation when brahma sleeps that means uh, the one day of brahma is finished no correct then the next yamaduta yami yamaraj will be another soul no oh, okay not the same Yama, yamaraj you know yamaraj will, yamaraj is a position but the soul that takes up the position is different including all demigods will be dissolved right yeah all night. gone all gone except this three planetary system where pious uh, souls are staying you know you mean tapaloka so, janaloka and uh, marloka marloka they will all be finished during brahma's uh, life 100 years so so the top four planets will still be there The remaining ten mm. planets will be dissolved. Oh God! Dissolved means they will exist, but there will be no life. They go under the water, no? 
Okay. That's why when Brahma wakes up, he has to start creating again, no? Not that he create one time and then that's it, no? Every day he has to wake oh. up and create. Mm. There's work for him to do, no? That's why in this two, two, nine something, you know, he's praying to the Lord, you know? Uh, please, uh, you know, tell me how to do this again. Then Krishna says, you have already done this many times, you know? The verse is there, no? Bhagavadam. Mm. 2 9. Uh, you can see he asked for benediction. So then he went for penance. The Lord told him to go and do penance, correct? Yes. Uh, then again, he saw the Vaikuntha planet, he saw the Lord. Hmm? Then Rama is praying. So he spoke all the verses, the four important verses. Then he says, yeah. So Brahma is blind. So you can see. The Brahma is told, if you just follow my instruction, you will, nothing will happen to you. Hmm? Because Brahma is practically as good as the Lord, no? Hmm. So hmm? during this time, Lord Shiva and Shirodakshai Vishnu are still existing, right? How come this word is different now? 38, 2938, 6, 37. So the moment, you know, so there's a partial, partial annihilation happens like in, uh, you can see in the Chakshusa, Manvantara, you know, then in the Swayambhuva Manvantara, beginning of Brahma's day, and also in the sixth, sixth uh, Manvanta Avatar, also there was a an partial annihilation. Hmm? So, so, all the pastimes of the Lord, no? Then he came as a fish, you know? Hmm? So during Manvantara change also, uh, what uh, all the life will be uh, removed from the planets, Prabhu? When the Manvantara is partial annihilation, then the annihilation also goes up to the point of the, you know, Marloka, Janaloka and Tapaloka excuse, no? Okay, so the top four um, are excused, the yeah. remaining ten are devastated. In full annihilation, then when Brahma dies, then everything is finished, no? Uh, that all fourteen. Mm. Then the whole universe, everything is gone into the body of Karbodashi Vishnu. So the night of Brahma and change of Manvantara are both uh, same effect? Yeah. Okay. Every day, the universe, uh, correct? So every day, 14 times it will change, right? 14, mm. one month. Correct. Mm. So this is how it is going on day and day in Lord Brahma, no? 
Yes. And that is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari, who is the object of transcendent enjoyment for the senses. The Brahma with folded hands began to recreate, see, the full living entities as it was previously. So he keeps doing it, you know, when the moment, the moment wakes up, there's work to do, no? Yeah. And before he does it, he's praying to the Lord, no? You understand? Not that he simply wakes up and does the job. He's always mindful about the position of Krishna, you know? You follow? Yes, Prabhu. So Brahma is, you know, So Brahma is saying that while I'm creating this thing, please bless me that I don't get proud, you know? Mm. You follow? Yes, Brahma. So Brahma is also concerned, you know? Understand now? You can see here. So when he recreates every time, the living entities are those who are not liberated yet, right? They go into the body of Prabhupada Vishnu, waits, and the moment the Lord recreates again and they put into the position where their last birth was, you know? Mm, okay. You understand? I shall be engaged in the creation of different types of living entity and I shall be occupied in a service. I shall have no perturbation, but if I pray that all this may not give rise to pride as if I were the Supreme. See how dangerous this creation job is? Understand? So Brahma, some, this, somebody quoted from your you know that the first thing the person take birth is Brahma from the spiritual world when he falls down, correct? Oh, it's true. Yeah. And then he becomes a worm. Hmm? Because Brahma falls down, if he doesn't surrender, then he starts thinking like this, then he goes down and down and down. Hmm. So it's very dangerous to take birth even as a Brahma. That's why the body, they don't want to be implicated, you know. They just want to be humble servant. They don't want all this position. Na danam, na janam, na sundarima kavitam, correct? Hmm? Yes, bro. So it's very dangerous, you know, to take up a position. You can get all carried away. <laughs> Especially when you get worshipped, you know. Yes. Yes, true. Hmm. So we have to be cautious. Right can always come in. Yes. Yes, true. Even you are simple cooking or playing the instrument or preaching or anything, you can always get proud, no? Yes, true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Sir. How to conquer this pride is our our important task, you know. That's why the uh, Brahman, I mean the the leprosy Vasudev, you know, the moment he he got cured by the Lord, correct? Hmm? You know yes. the part. You know the part, right? He got cured by the Lord, no? Yes. yes sir. Then he asked the Lord, please, you know, help me to cure me from this pride. And the Lord replied, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <clears throat> if you always remember uh, to chant and preach, then you will not be disturbed by this pride. 
Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. yes. You know? Do you know? Uh, do you know where I'm speaking about? Seven, one, two, eight. You can see here, uh, this is the verse. We take that out. Huh? So here, Kurma. So the Lord <clears throat> embraced him and then he's always, uh, you know, knows. Of course. And this is the verse you can see. The Adilila, right? Antilila. Ah, uh, this is uh, not a long, yeah. You can see here. To protect the Brahmana, say he asked this question. Being meek and humble, the Brahmana Vasudev worried that he would become proud after being cured by the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he asked this question, you know. So he had been touched by the Lord and he became purified. Then the Lord said, to protect the Brahmana, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advised him to chant the Hare Krishna mantra incessantly. By doing so, he would never become unnecessarily proud. See this thing? Hmm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also advised Vasudev to preach about Krishna and thus liberate living entities. As a result, Krishna would very soon accept him as a devotee. So to preach Krishna consciousness will also humble us. Hmm? Hmm. Understand? Hmm? Yes, Prabhupada. So Prabhupada writes here, each and every member of the society was rescued from a very abominable condition. Correct? Yes, Prabhupada. Therefore, now they are engaged in preaching the cult of Krishna consciousness. They are not only cured of the disease called materialism, but are also living a very happy life. Everyone accepts them as a great devotee of Krishna and their qualities manifest in their very faces. If one wants to be recognized as a devotee by, by Krishna, you should take to preaching work following the advice of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then one will undoubtedly attain the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Lord Krishna himself without delay. What is the process to stay away from pride? Hmm? Yes? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. Otherwise, even Brahma is praying, I don't want to be proud, no? Mm. So pride is a very dangerous thing, no? That's why the Lord also spoke about that in the ninth canto. Hmm? Yes, bro. Mm. For Brahmana, austerity and learning are certainly auspicious. But when acquired by a person who is not gentle, such austerity and learning are most dangerous. You understand? To give you the thing that you are very proud, no? Mm. Yes? Mm. Correct? That's true. So therefore, we should be very careful, even though, we, as Prabhupada right there, we are all delivered, but that should not give us 
right no mm -hmm. so that is the quality in the mode of goodness in the mode of goodness a sense of pride you know to creep in oh i am high class brahman hmm? mm -hmm. yes yes bro yes bro that's why we are trained to become humble tanada api suni chena taro api sai suna avane na madina kitanya sadahari yes Mm. Any other questions? No. Anything from anybody else? I see some new people, Arun, Soba. Huh? Any questions? Yes. Nothing from my side, Shabu. Oh, so yes, we have uh, we have understood this point, huh? Yes. Hare Krishna, Arun Prabhu. Can you introduce yourself? Hello, maybe he's very shy, probably, right? Eh? 